Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to take a look at the c -Sharp language design meeting notes from all the way back in August where the team did the initial triage for the c -Sharp 11 features. In case you don't know, the c -Sharp lang has an open source repository. You can go in GitHub and check it out, star it and subscribe to all the um, announcements they make and they release the notes from the language design meetings they have and you can find them all here in this repository. So usually I come in here and this is where you can get all your updates related to progress for individual features and all that. So in this video, we're going to take a look at each one of them. Obviously, not all of them will make it into the language version. In fact, some of them are carry over from features that didn't make it into C Sharp 10. And we're going to see if we can find something interesting in there. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to get highlighted when I upload a new video. So let's go with the first one. And actually, right out of the get-go, I can see that one of them, which is missing, is the required keyword. So the required keyword actually did not make it into C Sharp 10. And in case you don't know what the required keyword is, I uploaded a short explaining the three features that were scrapped from C Sharp 10. So you can check that out if you want. But obviously it's not here. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to go straight into the first one, which is generic attributes. And this feature is a carryover from C Sharp 10. Originally it was supposed to be in preview in C Sharp 10, but it didn't even make it in preview. So let me show you what that is. I'm going to click here and it is effectively the ability as the name implies to have generic types on the attribute level. So things like this type converter would have to resort to a type of or a type parameter um, in order to get some type details into the object itself, into the attribute, and this would make things harder than they should be, and we didn't want to do that. So instead, now you can use a generic on the attribute, and this was working in a preview. I actually showed it in my uh, all the C Sharp 10 features video, uh, but unfortunately it had to be scrapped, so it was removed, and it's going to make it into C Sharp 11. The majority of the work is supposed to be done, and I can't quite remember why they removed it, but hopefully we'll see it here and this will make the lives of many library maintainers and developers so, so easy. And anyone else for that matter. Now, the next one is the field keyword and the field keyword would give you the ability to access the field behind an auto property because an auto property in C Sharp is effectively a field and then a getter and a setter method or a getter or a setter method depending on how you go about it. So it would allow you to access it and be able to set its value without having to create an explicit field and exit that auto property goodness that you had before. It's a really nice, neat feature and it's more of a quality of life um, thing more than anything, which I quite liked and I was sad to see go, but I honestly potentially wouldn't use it, but I know many people who would want to have it there, so I'm happy they're adding it. Now, the next one is interesting. It's called list patterns, and it's another of those pattern matching features, which we've seen come every C Sharp language uh, version, basically. And this one would allow you to do things like list or enumerable. Um, well, I'm assuming list because it says list, but it might be extended to enumerable to is one, two, three, four. So what is that? Is it like an enumerable that matches like that the first item is a one, the second is a two, uh, the third is a three? That's a bit complicated, but what I do like is this slice pattern over here where it appears that it would match a list or an enumerable that starts with one, ends with five, and then it gives you a slice in the middle to play with as a variable. That is interesting, but I think in general, these pattern matching proposals, because they are tied to constants in compile time, they're very hard to find a decent use case for them. Like the fact that you can do that, and I do have a pattern matching video to see what I mean, but the fact that you can do these sort of like extended patterns and all that, it's a tricky one because the use cases are limited. There are some very general purpose, very good ones. I totally agree. But some of the very advanced examples they're showing, and I'm showing in my videos for that matter, are a reach unless you can actually use proper variables. Now, there's quite a few notes here. I don't want to sidetrack this whole video, but I highly recommend you go at your own time and you read through this if you're interested. They're publishing them for a reason. They need the feedback. So please feel free to contribute to the language. Now, the next one is static abstracts in interfaces. And we kind of got that already. It's currently in preview. 
um, not we kind of, we did get it already, it's in preview and you can go ahead and use it. And it's that thing that you saw before where in an interface you can now have um, a static abstract something something and this opens the door for not only mathematics but some other very neat things. I know Khalid uh, from Twitter has done some interesting things with adding metadata to minimal APIs in a more elegant way, which I quite like. So it is a nice feature, but it's basically already in the language. So I'm not going to look too much into it. There's a billion videos talking about it. Now, the next one is a pretty interesting one. It is the declarations under OR patterns. And it's interesting because it's very simple, but it solves uh, a problem that many people had, which is imagine you have these switch cases where you have the case that matches I and then zero here and then zero and I here. And then if you didn't want to break on the first one and want to match both, you could simply remove the break and it would just fall into use I no matter which I it was, which could be something you want to do. So now you can have or here and it doesn't matter where the position of this is it will still allow you to use the eye effectively giving you the same approach as this with less code uh, which is very convenient nice little feature i probably subconsciously will try to use this currently assuming that it works so it's nice that they're adding it because i would end up having a compiler error next one is records and initialization and that's an interesting one because it doesn't have an issue associated with it. So it it's basically talking points for the next meeting. At this point, they probably had the meeting, but it takes some time for them to upload the notes. So we don't know exactly what that is. Is it gonna be like primary and secondary constructors and stuff like that? I don't know, but I'm interested to see what it is. Next one is a big one. Many people have been talking about this and many people have been requesting for this. In fact, the proposal must have been ancient at this point. Yeah all the way back to 2017, that's four years ago. And it's funny how the first comment says, um, I wouldn't expect progress on this feature to precede records, assuming that records would happen before this. Yes, they did. Now there's a metric ton of lines of comments here, which I think actually some of them, yeah, 198 hidden comments. If I extend everything, you'll see how massive that page is. And I don't even think this is everything. So many, many comments. Now we don't quite know how this feature will end up looking like in its final form, but F Sharp actually has this as a feature and we can take a look at that. So here's the page for discriminated unions in F Sharp and my F Sharp is not amazing, but I can read my way around it. So effectively you have a type shape here, which can be a rectangle or a circle or a prism effectively meaning that that type can be one of those three things. An option is a great example of a discriminated union. An option type, which there are libraries for that in C Sharp as well, is a type that can be either some value or no value. This is a very fundamental functional concept when you don't have um, null as a thing. Uh, and you can either have like a number or some number or some string or nothing. It's that idea, and I've talked about this in my one-off video, which tries to do something similar, but it's not quite as elegant as you'd want, at least if you had the compiler's powers to shape it into something more nice, um, like F Sharp, then probably more people would be using it. But that's the main idea. You can have a some type or some return object and can be one of many things. And depending on what you return, it, it is shaped as one of those things. It can be extremely useful depending on what you're doing in your business logic. Imagine that someone is registering a user and their account might be created or the username might be taken or the email might have been taken or the password might not be strong enough. All of these different scenarios could be one of the things returned in that discriminated union. So there's a wide range of things this can be. It's nice that they're adding it in C Sharp 11, depending on when that's planned to be released. And I hope it's not in a year because I don't necessarily think they're gonna make it, but I, I can only hope. Um, I really wanna see this in the language. I've talked about this in the past. That's my most requested feature. Next we have params for span, which sounds exciting. So. Currently, you can use the, the params keyword. You have 
effectively a, an array of things that can be n amount of things. You don't know upfront how many they can be, and you can do comma and then keep adding things, and then this will build an array. But span, being a ref read only struct, it can't be allocated on the heap, and obviously those arrays created by params are allocated on the heap. So how do we do that for this to be allocated on the on the stack? And maybe do we extend it for enumerables as well, enumerables? So that's what this is aiming to do. And please, I really want to see that. I really want more people to start using span, normalizing it as something that can be used in more places because it ultimately just leads to better code and faster code. Next, we have statements as expressions. This one is weird. Like, we're talking code like this. Now, here's the thing. I like this type of programming. But I can totally see how many people who have been using c -sharp for quite some time think that this looks weird. And if someone makes a PR and says, hey, Microsoft added this expression blocks type of thing, let's add it. Like, code that looks like this, like, I'm not saying it's a bad feature. I'm just saying I can see adoption being a problem because it doesn't really look, I mean, it kind of looks like pattern matching this this thing specifically sure it's not a bad idea but i can't deny that like look at the first comment in terms of implementation this will be a shockingly easy mistake to make here's why they mentioned that a comma in that thing is a collection initializer a semicolon is an expression block don't ask now you can see in the likes and dislikes that this hasn't been received as positively as many would be expecting. Look, it's tricky. I like it in principle and I like languages to have more features. I'm just saying it can, using it, it can make C-sharp code from like one code base to another look wildly different. And mm, that could potentially be a problem. In any case, I like that they're doing this, but I want to see more about this in detail to see how I feel about it. Next one is expression trees, but we do have expression trees. So I want to know what this is about. Let's click on that. So, okay, expression tree evolution. So it's effectively taking expression trees to the next level. It has been quite the stale feature, to be honest. And as you can see, the motivation behind this is there have been no significant updates, they're staying behind, and you can see that all of these are things that expression trees, the way I understand it, don't support. Yeah, they're either unsupported or more restrictive in compiler-generated ex extension trees. What I'm not quite sure about is that this proposal, because expression trees is such a huge thing, they propose a compiler parameter called expression tree lang version. The same way you have lang version and other things in your like csproj, which is turned into a compiler instruction. Here's the thing. Adding another thing that I have to keep in mind for expression trees, just for expression trees, like sure it's a big feature, but is it big enough to have its own lang version? I don't know. I like this in principle, especially for library creators. Like, it looks good. It looks big, though, at least in my opinion. And having these versions will only make it weirder. Like, how does it work if I'm building a library and I'm referencing a library that has a different expression version? I mean, we can probably work this out, but I'm saying it's another thing that can be a bit confusing. So I don't know how I feel about this. So the next one is the type system extensions. And this one doesn't have any concrete information. They mention about some general improvements around types and maybe adding some sort of unit type. In case you don't know, many languages don't have void. They return a unit, which represents, I don't know if that's the like correct by the book answer, but it is effectively some type that doesn't necessarily represent anything, but it's a type as opposed to void, which isn't a type, it's just nothing. We don't know much about this, so I'm going to leave it here. 
but I really want to know more about this because that unit type might be interesting. Now that's everything in that triage and I highly recommend you go to the repo, give it a star and you start digging around. You're going to start finding more and more things, but I really want to talk about it because with C Sharp 10 now released, we have to look to what's coming next. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe, more than like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.